Me, 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 me. Three, two, one. Welcome. Did you see the deal that Joe Rogan signed with Spotify? What, he signed like a different deal? Than yeah, the- well, the contract expired. A lot of the contracts that, that Spotify had with podcasts expired yeah. recently. Before we get into this, can I, I just want to talk about the aggressive choice of tomato juice as my drink. People would have noticed eventually. I think that's like a sign I'm getting old. A thirst quench. Do you like tomato juice? It's fine. I don't dislike tomato juice. How about this? Is this a spicy one? The spicy one is the, the is the better one, in my opinion. It's the superior tomato juice. But this is such an old person. No kid who's like 12 is like, ooh. I mean, it's recent for me, for sure. Yeah. You know what? Like That means you're getting old. Yeah. You know what? Oh, wait, one more thing. One more thing about being old. Do you think... When you're when you're like good and old, like you know, sixty five or whatever, like ready to retire, seventy, ready to retire. Um, do you want to live in a retirement home, mm. a nursing home, or your own home with, like, like you're old, like you can't take care of yourself, yeah. and obviously, like, you know, no one's gonna be around because you're probably gonna alienate your family okay. or your friends, you know, sure, you know, something like that. Yeah. So you have to have some sort of like care. Would you rather an in-home nurse? In-home. Absolutely. You want in-home? Yeah. I'd, I'd relocate to a one-story house, and I'd put my I'd put a California king bed in the living room, and <laughs> I would never leave. I, don't th- I think the relocation is like, if you're going to relocate, why wouldn't you just be... I think a nursing... Not a nursing home. Not like the one where you're like, well, that's just your life sucks because you're just like, you have no capability to do anything. But like a retirement community... I want to die somewhere where I've, where I'm in control of what I'm around in my environment, like physically. Like I want my artwork on the walls. Well, you could do that in a retirement home. You could hang stuff on the walls. Yeah, but I like it's, dude. I there's going to be shitty houses. No, and stuff. man. I worked at one in high school. Wesley? Wesley. Wesley. Dude. Yeah, I don't want to die in a fucking high rise apartment. Oh, building. dude, it seems so Fuck sick. That. Would, it seems yeah. so sick. If to I've me. got the money, I want to fucking yeah. think about. Think about and how, if I feel like I need more companionship than one person, then I'll hire a staff. No, 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 no. no, no. I'm a bus boy. Think about have... how lit. <laughs> think about how lit freshman year college was. It's like that, but there's no regrets because guess what? If you fuck anything up, you're going to die soon anyway, dude. Have you ever been to a funeral at a retirement community? No. They're not great, to be honest with you. Like, I, I bet they don't start on time. The chapel is... A lot is, of like, hang on, we gotta wait for... Yeah, I mean, it's just like... Imagine just like a shitty event space with like shitty chairs and... Why would they... Barely they, a chapel. Obviously. Why would they have it there then? Why not have it in I guess else? they... I mean, if you want to plan a real funeral, you can plan a real funeral, but it makes sense to have a, a space to do one there because that way all of your friends don't have to fucking go very far to attend your funeral. I don't know, man. I think I'm I think I'm pro not nursing home, I'm pro retirement community. You know what I was thinking about the other day? What? What's the what's the wor- what's the worst name? Like not worst. Worst is the wrong word. What's a name that like no grandma can have or grandpa? No old person can have. You know what the answer is? Brittany. <laughs> Think about that. Yeah. Think about uh, anyone named Brittany. They are sub 40 years old. There's no one over 65. Like, hi, I'm Brittany. What's a weird one for a dude? For some reason, I'm thinking Kyle. I was going to say Kyle. Kyle's uh, weird. Brittany, I think, is the ultimate for, for, for girl, uh, yeah. grandma. But, like, grandpa, I don't. I can't. Uh, Kyle's a good one. Uh, Brad? No. Your dad's name is Brad. Yeah, but I picture him like... You could have a kid out there. He could... He, he what? I said, you could have a kid out there. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. You know, I used to... Did you guys know people at home? Um, You know how people talk, like, donate sperm and uh, like make money or whatever? Yes. I um am super 
offended at the anti what is what is the word anti- body positivity An- i don't know anti- I- anti- anti-average height human anti i'm ver- <laughs> anti vertically challenged <laughs> Fucking! I went. I tried to donate sperm. I've tried to donate sperm multiple times. I used to live in Boston, and I was broke in college and whatever. And I was like, I'll donate sperm, because uh, my friend did it, and he was doing it all the time. And you like go, and you he would go like two or three times a week, and you just like two or three times a week. You, yep. And you'd like jerk <laughs> off into a cup. It was fifty bucks a cup, and uh, you only get paid fifty dollars a cup. No way. Something it's gotta like be that. more than that. Maybe a hundred. I don't know. It was. It was in Boston. It was probably like through college. I was I was told, uh, I was told that (laughs) it's that you get paid more based on your load on your load size. Maybe it's not cup. Maybe it's per ounce. (laughs) Yeah, it's by. Maybe my friend was only getting fifty because he was just dribbling. Yeah, he wasn't. (laughs) He wasn't hydrated (laughs) enough. (laughs) Um. Anyway, dude. So I was like, yeah, I'll donate sperm. It's a great way to make a little bit of extra cash. They won't. Take you unless you're over six foot. I swear. They told me I was too short. They said, we don't want you. You're too short. And you said, no, I'm six foot. I said, see? Yeah. No. I'm 5'10". I'm not the tallest of them all, but I'm not, like, short. And also, who do, What? You don't need short king sperm? What the fuck? Anyway, so just watch out, guys. You, you, you know, these people... They're very superficial. Very superficial, these mm. these sperm donation banks. They're perverts, too. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of fucking perverts over there. <laughs> um, Man, I love tomato juice. Nice. So, Joe Rogan's deal with Spotify. You want to know what it is? Uh, he keeps getting paid, but isn't exclusive on Spotify. Yeah, but... Remember the last deal was three years ago for a hundred million dollars. Okay. This one was two hundred and fifty million dollars, and the only exclusivity that Spotify has is full episode videos are only going to be on Spotify. I don't think that's true. Yeah. No. I, thought, I swear to God, I, I think I just YouTube, saw YouTube has oh, he YouTube? can put clips back on YouTube. I thought I saw a whole episode on YouTube. Uh. I mean, well, I don't it was like know an hour and a half clip. Maybe that's a clip. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they. I don't. I mean, maybe it wasn't that, but uh, everywhere I'm seeing where they're like bullet pointing the details, they're saying some video on YouTube. So maybe Spotify has certain episodes that are exclusive. Like Spotify is almost like a fucking uh, what's the website that we don't have? Pornhub. No. <laughs> uh, Patreon. Mm. Almost like they're doing like Spotify will have certain episodes that are exclusive to them, but not audio, just video. Mm. It's weird, but all episodes are going to be available audio on every platform, which is crazy. Two hundred fifty million dollars. That's insane. I wonder if they spread that out to bet more podcasts. How much? Like, because obviously they're doing that because Joe Rogan has the biggest podcast ever. Yeah. But I wonder if they spread that love a little bit and like made some more exclusive deals with like. Podcasts that are big but not huge, like Are You Garbage? Or um, that's the best example I can think of, honestly, because like every other podcast I listen to, like, I, know, I don't like, think they, uh, from Spotify's perspective, I don't think that they need to because it almost like trickles down. Like people see that they made this huge deal with Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan draws people to there and then they have a whole algorithm that pushes all those other podcasts to them and they don't have to pay those podcasts. And apparently no one's figured it out. We have video on Spotify and every other big podcast like fucking Two Bears, Are You Garbage, fucking uh, This Past Weekend, all these other podcasts, none of them have figured out that you can put video on Spotify. We're the only fucking ones. Us and Joe Rogan. So if you're listening on Spotify right now, look at your phone. Yeah. Hey. Hey. What's up? Um, Dummies. Uh, yeah, pretty crazy. Um, he was number one on a- on Apple Podcasts on the first day that he got put back on there. Damn, dude. Crazy. I mean, I haven't listened to his podcast in a long time. I haven't listened to a full episode in fucking years. Yeah. I mean, I will sometimes tune in to uh, Protect Our Parks with like Shane Gillis, Mark Norman, and um, Ari Shafir. Mm-hmm. They just like... 
It's like the new version of the Sober October one. Mm -hmm. They basically just go on and like that's when all those memes of like Ari Shafir passed out on the ground Mm -hmm. and Shane Gillis with like 14 beers in front of him. That's the uh, park, uh, Protect Our Parks pod. Um, So I'll listen to that occasionally. But uh, yeah, no, I haven't listened to Joe Rogan in a very very long time but what podcast do you listen to other podcasts not really i went through a phase where i was listening to podcasts but i was listening to shit podcasts to be honest like what i'm not gonna say that <laughs> oh what, they were bad <laughs> uh no i just don't want to shit on anybody's podcast it's not like ours is like any better than anybody else's but it just didn't grip me you know didn't get a hold of me didn't sink its teeth in Ooh. uh no, but I still really love Are You Garbage, but I just, they ha- like, they haven't had on a, uh, guests that I wanted to listen to recently, and I listened to just so many episodes, and I was like, all right, I need a break. I don't have, like, a diverse, I listened to podcasts the same way that I listen to music, so I was listening to them every single day. What do you think's wrong with you that makes you do that? I don't know. For anyone who, like, doesn't understand what I'm saying, Carl, like, he likes five bands and the fifth one is new he likes the beatles that was his first band he started to like then tame impala then mac demarco then lcd sound system and now idols and those are like the only bands that carl listens to i'm kind of a similar way i get really obsessed with an album and then i'll like listen to that only for like five weeks but then i do a lot of playlists and a lot of jumping around listen to this and listen to that blah 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 blah. but you like legitimately i feel like only listen to those five people men i trust oh yeah men i trust and father john misty you had a little father john misty kick but carl like will only like he'll be like oh but during- i've just been listening to men i trust for the past two weeks and that's all i've listened to yeah mm-hmm that's what I do. I don't know. I just cuz it's like I get into a mood and then that mood also is it's not just what I'm in the mood to listen to. It's like who I'm in the mood to be a fan of. Like I'm really into these Joe Talbot. Who? Joe Talbot. He's the lead Joe singer. Talbot. I'm of like idols. In, yeah. I'm really all, into like all watching right his in the village. Yeah. That guy. I'm into watching his interviews, and then they, the magazine guitarist interviewed both of the guitar players and idols, and they did like a rig rundown for both of them. That was really sick. So it's like I'm in the mood to be like a big fan of theirs because I really, really like the band as a whole. Do you do that? Like, did you do that with Men I Trust? Did you like watch a bunch of interviews with them and stuff like that, or did you just listen to them? No, I was just listening to Men I Trust because their music's really relaxing and good. Yeah. You know, is uh, um, what's 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 his name? John Talbot. You said Joe. Joe Talbot. Is he a big? I don't really listen to idols that much. They're like very political, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it's going away from that. Like this album that they just put out, specifically Tank. He's been talking a lot about. It's like all love songs, and not love songs just directed to his wife, but love in general. Is what he's talking about. Kyle, so, can you shut that door, please? Love, passion, patience. Um, I can't remember. I think it was with MME or MNE, whatever that, or NME, whatever that fucking magazine is. Uh, he had a good interview talking about the album. And um, he. Uh, Bro, speaking of interviews, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, anyway, they're just moving away from like the passion, angry, rage against the machine stuff moving more towards more complicated emotions um, because they felt that they were getting put into a box and they wanted to challenge that before it was too late. So that's a good move. They're doing that when you feel, I feel like if you feel yourself getting boxed in, unless you act right away, you it's even harder to break out of that box. Where the, what I was going to say is speaking of interviews, where the fuck is Nardwar? Does he still do interviews? I don't know. If you guys don't know who Nardwar is, take a, take a minute and go ahead and look at him. He's like, the music the, journalism legend. Yeah, he wears the what's the kind of hat he wears? It's like a, it's like an old it's Scotsman's yeah golf hat. Do 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 do. Colin saying he does do interviews. Yeah, fucking Nardwar. I know I saw him do Doja Cat in the last couple of years. You know so. what really fell off for me? Is it Doja Cat? Hot ones. Oh, I haven't watched the Hot Ones in so long. 
Hot ones got like too big. I don't know. I like. I'm I also mean, I think COVID ruined it for me, to be honest. Like, oh, uh, when they did like Zoom weird. hot ones. Everything that happened on Zoom fucking pissed me off. I it never worked, and I I know it was like you had to make the best of it, and I'm cool with that. But some people were like, no, like this is, it's not just as good. You it's know what's not my pet peeve? People who still do Zoom interviews. No. I mean, that's my pet peeve. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I, I understand. I it's like we opened up the world like you and I. If we wanted to interview someone from like back home in Philly, we could do a Zoom interview. Right. I mean, if you see me do that, it means that like someone else told me to do that. I and I caved. I never want to do that. I know we opened it up and we're like, all right, we can do these Zoom interviews. We figured out how to do it. I get they just it. I, I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. They're never good. They always make me upset. So if you ever see me doing a Zoom interview, hit me in the fucking comments and say, David, are you okay? Anyway, go ahead. Uh, my pet peeve, I don't love Zoom shit either, but my pet peeve is in TV shows when they acknowledge the pandemic. Like, not fictional TV shows, but like, you know, when a story like Ozark or some shit like that, Ozark. Not I, you said not fictional TV. No, show? like fiction. Oh, fictional fiction, TV shows. But like not. I'm not talking like fantasy. Yeah, yeah. I mean like just You're, like realistic like, fiction yeah. shows. Like if Ozark had a period of the show that happened during COVID, I fucking hate that. Stop acknowledging that it was a real thing. I don't need it to be real in the yeah. TV shows that I'm watching. Yeah, TV is escapism. Yeah. You know? Like, there was a whole fucking... My mom used to watch this show, This Is Us, which is like an NBC drama. Yeah. And, like, a whole season of it takes place during COVID. And it's like, God, thanks. Great. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of... Is it a comedy or what is it? What kind of show is it? It's like a drama. Oh. Uh, like, it's kind of hard to have drama over a, over text and phone call on a TV show. Like, I was going to say with comedy, I feel like there is, there was a lot of shared experiences and there might be a lot of like new thing, new material to like joke about. Well, I think that they're realistically like. Oh my God. You know what's funny? Have you ever seen Fred Harmiston's thing about his, his stand up? Did you about- fucking like snort cocaine or something this morning? What is your deal? I don't know. I did have, a, I had a fair amount of caffeine. <laughs> I'm just anyway, trying to, I'm just trying to keep what about the, Fred Harmiston? I'm trying to keep this pod fucking rolling, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Gotta give the people what they want. Just keep it. I don't know. Keep it engaging. Keep it engaging. What were you gonna say? Was it as engaging as what I'm about to say? I just was gonna mention another show that talked about COVID, but we can move on. Well, Go ahead. now, but now you're doing exactly what you hate. You're talking about COVID. This is escapism for people. They don't want to hear about the shitty pandemic. Yeah, I feel like three le- three years of my life was just stolen. Okay, from so me. anyway, Fred Armiston, <laughs> Fred Armiston did. This stand-up bit, they're like a whole like five minutes, and it was all about, it was all drummer humor. Yeah. And five minutes, I thought it was a whole special, comedians or comedy for drummers or something like that. I saw it just five minutes of it. It, Maybe he did do a whole special. But similar to like the COVID thing, I was like, oh, there's a lot to work there, a lot of shared experiences that might come up, you know, like, oh, when your fucking Zoom doesn't work. And you're you're late for your Zoom meeting. Whatever the fuck. I'm not I'm not a comedian. So I don't know. But like the Fred Armisen thing. Like one of his jokes I remember him saying, I'll give it up because it's been out forever. If you haven't seen it, you're probably not gonna watch it anyway. He's like, No matter how long it takes me to set up my whole drum set, I feel like I'm always doing this. And he's like spinning the little wing nut on top of uh the symbol. He's like, I'm doing this more than I'm doing anything else. That's hilarious to me. Because I've done that, true. And you like set it all up and you just like... But, you know, niche comedy. Yeah. Super niche. What's the point? I don't know. You I just like, thought of you it. You like it? I just thought of it. Like, I was just saying that like that thing, you know, comedy is all, you you know, finding details of shared experiences or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, if, the, if, the, if a comedy TV show does it, you... You could probably get some good material out of. Speaking of comedy TV shows, you know Seinfeld. What I'm fucking excited. Yeah. 
<laughs> Yo, Seinfeld? have you guys ever seen this show Seinfeld? It's it, fucking it's great. It's crazy. Dude. It's literally about fucking nothing, and it's so goddamn funny, dude. I swear to God, I'm literally Kramer. I <laughs> used to not literally like Seinfeld. Like my dad would have it on. I'm like, this show fucking sucks. And now I'm 26, and I think it's like the funniest shit. Because you're drinking like, tomato juice. Yeah. And you pay taxes. <laughs> Yeah, fucking yeah. When I'm done on TurboTax and I finish my tomato juice, the best part of my day is watching Kramer bust in. You gotta take that fruit back, Jerry. Yeah. Uh, no, like imagine if like Seinfeld had a season that took place during COVID in New York City. I would fucking hate that. I don't want to see that. It might be funny. I don't care. You don't care. Yeah. You don't like you don't like to think about it. Yeah. You like to that. shove it down. Anyway, not to bring that back. Uh speaking of comedy shows, I'm so f- freaking excited about tires, bro. <gasps> you guys don't even remember. You don't even know. If you guys watch our sugar pit episode, you'll hear us talk to Kim. And Shane Gillis is one of our favorite comedians. Shane Gillis watched our podcast and he said, okay. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shane, we, we talked to Kian and we were talking about like famous people in his DMs because Kian's like, you know, famous or whatever now. And so he said that Shane Gillis likes Sugar Pit. He likes Sugar Pit's music. And then we told Kian about this pilot episode that I found years ago. And I've been sh- I show everybody this fucking thing. It's called Tires. It's with a bunch of Philadelphia comedians. It is so fucking funny. You can watch the original pilot, probably the original pilot on YouTube. Yeah, honestly, everybody, go fucking watch that shit. Because now that Netflix bought the show, it's definitely gonna get taken down. If it's not taken down, the I'm day, ready. yeah, the days are numbered. So it's like Tires with sort of like a bunch of I's and a bunch of R's. Um, it's so funny. And then after that episode. We did that episode with Kian like a week or two later. I saw on the internet that uh, Tires got bought up by Netflix and they're coming out with season one. Yeah, he um, announced it after his SNL monologue. Ah, uh, yeah, he, that's what he, it was. He announced did it. you watch that? I didn't watch it. The, yeah, it's hilarious. I mean, it's funny because he's very nervous. I mean, not only does he say it, but like if you're familiar with Shane Gillis and how he acts and how he talks both on podcasts and when he's doing stand up. You can tell that he's like he doesn't know how to do comedy for SNL on live television. It's like and he <laughs> he does really well, but like he he's like, ah oh, man, everybody it's really well lit in here. I can see everybody not enjoying this. That's it's funny. fucking awesome. You know what? I I I know this is a hot take. Hot take. Oh gosh. I don't fuck with SNL. That's not that hot of a take. Everybody knows that it's not as good as it used to be. Okay. Okay. Good. Someone explained to me why it's not as good. And it clicked. I didn't understand. I was like, yeah, I don't know. It just sucks. It just sucks now. It's just not funny. And um, Matt brought it up. He said the reason it used to be funny was because... The writers and the cast were fucking hilarious every week. And then you had a host come on, and the host was secondary to the cast and the writing. Now, the host is the main attraction. And the cast... Yeah, like Shane Gillis was in every skit. Yeah. Which they didn't used to do. So it used to be like, oh, you watch it every every week... Because the cast is amazing. You keep coming back for that amazing cast, but now it's like you only really tune in when it's a host that you like. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean... Shane and also, I just think it's fucking unfunny. I, I just don't think yeah, SNL's they used funny. To push I don't like television! They used to push the edge. Unless it's Seinfeld. Or the... Is that the right... Is that the... Push the boundaries. Yeah, a little bit more, but, you know, it's NBC, bro. Prime time. What do you expect? They can't be that funny. It's for the kids. I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong, though. Yeah, it's just like, you think about Will Ferrell when Will Ferrell was on there. I'm not denying, I'm not denying that SNL didn't give us some amazing, amazing talent. Like, the more cowbell skit, like, fucking floor, did floor me when I first saw it. Um, And, like... You watch certain people on there, and you're like, damn, Will they Ferrell, kill... Will Ferrell might be the funniest person to ever come out of SNL, to be honest. 
in my opinion. Um, I I can't tell you because I don't know who like was born out of it. Lots of people, but wasn't Eddie Murphy? Mm-hmm. Uh, Eddie Murphy's pretty. Eddie funny. Eddie Murphy was fucking so funny. He had <laughs> he did uh, Mister. Not Mr. Rogers. It's Mr. Robinson or something like that. And it's black Mr. Rogers in, in the hood. Uh, <laughs> and he gets evicted. He's like, oh, an eviction notice. <laughs> it's like, holy <laughs> fucking shit, dude. It's so goddamn That's hilarious. Funny. Hey, let me check something real quick. Oh, then. How much time do we have? We're at 25 minutes. we got a couple minutes left. Let's uh, hit, up, um, hit up our closing And he also did here. Gumby. But he was like really mean he's like i'm gumby bitch it's like he kind of sounded like the soup nazi in seinfeld uh, it was fucking hilarious shit uh yeah eddie murphy was really good but just will ferrell just fucking went the distance who said it i think maybe colin told me somebody said about snl or maybe it was when who was somebody else i was talking to it's like snl if you get onto it your first two years, you're going to be like too nervous to do like to realize you're doing well. And then after your second year, you're going to be so comfortable that you're going to like start like killing super hard, realizing you're killing and then realizing that like it's time to leave SNL and go do be- bigger and better things. Mm. Talk about like uh, Colin just yelled from the other room. Bill Hader is the one that said that. I'm probably botching the fucking quote, but I don't know. Google it. Bill Hader talking about it. Um, I've been thinking a lot about practice and what it means to. Let me let me. This is a here, real quick, real quick, real quick. OK, I'm back because I, I don't want to get cut off here if, if if this goes a little bit longer. I've been thinking a lot about practice and the. Just the idea of doing something over and over and over again in order to feel truly comfortable, you know, like, you know, I guess it's the idea, like the 10,000 hours, like master thing. It's not even necessarily about that. It's not like mastering something. Uh, It's just feeling like where the nerves go away. Like, uh, let me try to explain. Let me just explain exactly what I'm referencing, and that might give you a better glimpse into my point here. I've been writing a lot of fucking music recently, and one of the things I notice is if I have a week where I don't have a lot of work, like a lot of like work that I have to go do, then I have a lot of time at home. I write a fuckload, right? Monday and Tuesday, I write a lot of shit, and it's like fine, but like. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I just like the it just flows out of you and it just starts getting better and better and better. And then I think it has something to do with just like being in the position all the time with the fucking guitar plugged in, microphone on, right ready to go. And you have to do that a fuckload. Actually, uh, you know, specifically to songwriting. Ed Sheeran said it. It's like to write good songs. Ed Sheeran, I mean, good songwriter, pop songwriter, whatever. To write good songs, it's like a it's like a faucet you haven't turned on in a while. You turn it on, and a bunch of shit water, a bunch of brown water is gonna come out, and you guys gotta wait until it starts really flowing. And then it's like every time you stop writing, every time I stop writing for like a week, and I gotta get the brown water out again, you know. Um, but in reference to to like. We were talking about SNL and these people getting like r- like getting their comedy chops. They're like live comedy. They're sketch comedy chops. They're just doing it all the fucking time, every fucking week. I just I'm just I'm wowed watching people perform their craft, whatever it may be: sports, comedy, music, writing, anything. I'm snare always, drum noise performances. Snare drum noise performances. Performances as a whole, you know, performance art, whatever it is. Like I just I'm always in awe when you could just really feel it when someone's doing something, you're like, oh, they do this all the time. And it's not necessarily that they're a master at it. It's just like when the activity becomes 
there it is. When the activity becomes home, when you're like, ah, you're not out of your comfort zone. When whatever activity you're doing, that is your comfort zone. That's when like you're, you know, in you know, it. in it. Yeah. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You got any thoughts? Uh, No. Yeah. You want to wrap it up? Let's, let's, I got to go to work. Okay. Do you have any? Do you have anything else you want to say? No, that's okay. That's Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, got lots of subscribers in the past week. Welcome everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, if you're new, hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name's David. That's Damn, Carl. We should we should do that at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. Next week. Next. I don't. I don't want to start the podcast like that though. Well, we'll do five minutes and then we'll do something. And it'll fuck up the flow. Yeah, but we need to welcome people. They deserve a welcome. We need to acknowledge them. All right. And they might not make it this far. They might not make it this far. We're doing clips now, by the way. Like, I know we did the, like, the TikToks and shit, but now we're going to do like five-minute clips and stuff like that. Yeah, bitch. Subscribe. Yo, subscribe right now, bitch. Beep, 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 beep. Thank Goodbye, you. Goodbye, everybody.